Get a life! A Nintendo life? Hey, it's Dave from Nintendo Life. You may know me as The Game Dave. And today, I'm going to be bringing you the top 20 Nintendo Switch RPGs. And I'm so glad that number is higher than 10 because RPGs are the best Gs. Now, the Nintendo Life team have spent all of their time grinding for experience to produce this list. So join me as we count down the top 20 RPGs on the Switch. Starting off with number 20, we have Moon Hunters, a four-player cooperative roguelike straight out of Kickstarter. Choose your class, your starting region, and delve into the procedurally generated journey. Your decisions in the game will affect your stats and how the tale of your heroics are told at the end of the somewhat easy and short story. The action RPG combat and replayability in exploration make Moon Hunters a game worth revisiting with new characters time and time again. Next up at number 19, the spiritual sequel to I Am Setsuna, Lost Sphere. Any issues you might have with I Am Setsuna are washed away with this game. Lost Sphere continues to rely on our nostalgia vision for JRPGs, but I'm okay with that if it's done right, and it is here. Our main protagonist is Kanata, an orphan from Elgarth Village. In this world, things have been getting lost, but I'm not talking about just your car keys, okay? People and even places are becoming lost, leaving behind a white mist. Ooh, careful there, children. If this is anything like the mist in Final Fantasy IX, you better, you better watch out because some black mages are going to be coming for you. But no, not in this game. You must restore what has been lost to the mist. Combat is more polished this time around and adds in positioning and movement of your character during battle. Oh, and they've added mechs to the game. And it's Final Fantasy VI all of a sudden. But as I've said, Lost Sphere builds on I Am Setsuna and delivers an old school experience that will become a classic in its own right as it ages. For number 18, how about Minecraft? With a little more graphical polish, character classes and customization, and a lot more stuff to fight. Sound good? Alright, well here is Portal Knights. It gives me a bit of that Dragon Quest Builders feel, but that is not a bad thing. There's a lot to explore in this game by yourself or with friends, if uh, you're lucky enough to have some. The boss battles are quite impressive to look at and engage in. Much like Minecraft, the addictive quality of Portal Knights is very prevalent as you craft, upgrade skills, and build a world to share with others. Number 17 on this list, Gauntlet! Oh, oh wait, sorry, sorry. Quest of Dungeons. In this roguelike with sprite-based top-down 2D graphics, you'll be dungeon crawling to find loot, keys, and coins as one of the four character classes. You know, like Gauntlet. Okay, it's a bit different. Things only happen when you do things that happen. So it's turn-based in a way on this gameplay grid. Avoid traps, slay monsters with turn-based strategy, take on quests, and when you die, check the leaderboards and see how well you did compared to the world. And number 16, all I can say is, uh, It'll do. It'll do. It'll do 2 plus the ultimate Legend of Zelda Link to the Past parody. Humorous, charming, and filled with puzzling dungeons. It'll do plus is an open-ended adventure with enough familiarity to rekindle some nostalgia while also putting your butt to work with its challenge and difficulty. At first, it seems this wonderful little indie title is just paying homage to a classic, but then it grows into a worthwhile experience that stands on its own. Number 15 on the list, South Park the Fractured But... Wait for it, wait for it. But... Ho! The sequel to The Stick of Truth is very much worthy of the genre RPG with classic turn-based combat, open-world exploration, and an exacting recreation of the television show's look, feel, and non-Nintendo-friendly content. 
gotta love it. Surprisingly, the combat has improved, allowing for more depth to the strategy and the use of your superpowers as the fractured but whole takes a superhero RPG style. There's so much to uncover in this game that you'll inevitably uncover something that you really didn't want to. Thanks a lot, South Park. Number 14 is Battle Chasers Night War, an old school style JRPG that goes easy on the grinding to help bring the genre to the masses, allowing you to avoid combat with lesser enemies. The characters in your party all have something to offer and help provide unique combat strategies in the tried and true turn-based battles. The graphics won't blow your mind, but they are effective, clean, colorful, and appropriate. I love the hand-drawn stylized look of the world map for travel, and the beautiful dungeon layouts give the game a great sense of atmosphere. Battle Chasers Night War is a familiar yet fresh take on the beloved JRPG genre. Moving into number 13, I'm reminded of my favorite RPG console, the original PlayStation. And Earthlock is a game that will take you back to that era of role-playing perfection. Following the traditional RPG formula, and by traditional, I mean RPG with some extra J attached to the front. Your party will explore the world of Umbra with its traditional high fantasy style. Battle takes place on a separate screen from the main game, allowing for classic turn-based combat. We, we see that a lot with these games on this list. Each character has stances which act almost like job classes. Luckily, the battles move at a quick pace, making experience grinding much more bearable. In some instances, Earthlock may seem too old school as it doesn't feature voice acting and the graphics are a bit behind today's standards, but who plays JRPGs for the graphics anyway? Now don't you hate it when you inherit your relative's large manor estate? Only to learn it's infested with portals to dark dimensions, unleashing horrifying creatures? Yeah, me too, me too. At number 12, it's Darkest Dungeon. Put together your very own group of adventurers to enter the depths of the procedurally generated dungeons and clear them out. But be careful to watch your hero's stress levels where they might end up having a heart attack. No, seriously, that can happen, a heart attack. So come on, take care of your entourage, please. The paper cutout style graphics may not appeal to everyone, but they are functional enough to not be distracting, and the battle animations are enjoyable. If you're looking for a Lovecraftian horror-style RPG, Darkest Dungeon is for you. At number 11, we have Aegis Defenders, sort of an action role-playing platformer tower defense game. That's a lot of genre. Plus, you can bring along a friend for some of the puzzling dungeons. This is not an RPG in any normal sense. I mean, come on, it's got levels, but not experience levels, stages. Stages each with different phases, exploration through platforming and tower defense battles where you protect something or someone from an onslaught of enemies. You'll be attacking monsters, collecting resources, and building bases all while taking in the gorgeous art style. Oh, Disgaea, you are the ultimate time sink of strategy tactics games. And now your dwindling free time will be completely used up. With Disgaea 5 Complete at number 10 on our list. It's weird, it's bizarre, the battles are amazing, and it never takes itself too seriously. I mean, you've got blue penguins yelling, DUDE! Yes, the Disgaea series has always been hilarious, and Disgaea Complete is even more Disgaea-ish. The other appeal of Disgaea 5, you're never really done with this game. This is a seemingly endless adventure, especially if you have a completionist mindset. Want to max out your levels? <laughs> have fun making your way to level 9999! Oh, and then you can just reincarnate yourself and do it all over again. The Ultimate New Game Plus game? Numbers, 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 that's what you get in Disgaea 5 Complete. At number 9, we've got randomly generated dungeon crawling goodness with Crawl. A horrific romp through deadly traps and endless monsters where even death is no escape. Your death allows you to become a spirit that can possess objects, traps, and monsters 
to kill the new heroes that enter the dungeon. Succeed in destroying them, and you will be revived to continue your journey. The spooky atmosphere combines with an awesome chiptune soundtrack to create a never-ending cycle of dungeon progression fun. Why is this game so good? That's right, East 8 is on the Switch and at number 8 on our list. It's all about real-time, fast-paced hack-and-slash action in the East 8 battle system. You can rotate between your three party members instantaneously during battles to take full control of their actions. The combat is smooth, quick, and full of fun techniques that help avoid the flaw of hack-and-slash gameplay. Button mashery. Some might see the major draw of East 8 being the amazing environments you get to explore, and this certainly is a bright and beautiful RPG that any fan of the genre should experience. Now we're back to dungeon crawling with number 7, but this one's got a rhythmic twist. Crypt of the Necrodancer combines the classic dungeon crawl elements of fighting enemies and bosses, shopping for upgrades and discovering secrets, with a psychedelic disco floor of heart-thumping grooves. The trick here is that your actions are only effective if you perform them on beat with the Dungeon Dance Club music. This gives the game's actions a unique flow like you've never experienced before and lends a whole new meaning to the phrase, getting into a groove. If you master your rhythms, you'll be racking up multipliers and crushing your way through the dungeons in no time. Well, boy, howdy, at number six, it's West of Loathing. This Western-themed adventure RPG will have you in stitches, and I'm going to stop this ridiculous accent right now. Black and white is the perfect color scheme for such a charming Western tale. Choose your character and class from three, count them, three options. Snake Oiler, Bean Slinger, or, of course, Cow Puncher. West of Loathing offers up turn-based RPG combat, which gets the job done, but the focus is on the interactions and exploration of this comical and ridiculous Western setting. At number five, we've got Super Mario RPG. Uh, no, 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 that, that's not the case. But hey, a girl can dream of a proper sequel, can't she? It's Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Hands down, this is the most colorful and graphically beautiful tactics RPG you'll get to enjoy on the Switch. People worried about the combo of Mario and Rabbids, but it works. It really works. There's a chance for some exploration here, but Mario and Rabbids is all about the strategic combat. This ain't kid stuff. Bring your best tactic skills. That's not to say you'll get wrecked during the first battle. There's plenty of room for newcomers to ease into the gameplay and have a fulfilling experience. Albeit with some poop jokes. It is the rabbits after all. Changing gears, oh my sweet lord, this is the most beautiful project I've seen in years. Number four, Octopath Traveler. Since its initial announcement, I've been giddy to get my hands on this game. Choose your fate, eight stories await. An amazing modern take on classic 16-bit JRPGs from the mother of them all, Square Enix. Strategic turn-based combat, distinct stories, and a dynamic musical score. Though dungeons may seem repetitive and formulaic, the gameplay is top-notch. Interacting with NPCs and gathering your eight party members hidden throughout the world map will keep you enthralled for hours and hours. I've got nothing left. Octopath Traveler should at least get a solid Octo out of 10. Now come on and get your farm on. We all know it. Stardew Valley at number three. It's a farm simulator, but it's got its RPG elements. Your goal? Restore the old ways of farming, reinvigorate the community center, and fight back against the Joja Corporation. I mean, you could join the dark side, but this ain't fable. Be a good guy, live off the land, harvest crops, mine for ore, fish 
for fish, build your house, explore dark caves, battle creatures, fall in love, make a baby, milk a freaking goat. What can't you do in Stardew Valley? This is so much more than a farming simulator. And it's on the Switch. Here it is, it's everywhere. Every console, every system. It's on the Amazon Echo, probably on certain models of microwave. <laughs> It's everywhere, and it's even on the Switch. Come on, Skyrim. Yes, at number two, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Made its way to the Nintendo hybrid console with its aging self, but it still holds its own as a deep and diverse open world action RPG. Prepare to spend hours upon hours battling giant creatures to hone your combat skills, letting out those powerful shouts and getting lost in the expansive world of Skyrim, all from the comfort of your home, or on the go thanks to our little portable powerhouse. And now at number one, a Nintendo Switch exclusive, of course, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This is a huge RPG. Epic in scale and scope, it can be intimidating at first. In the world of Alrest, a water world, now don't get excited, it's not Mega Man Legends, I I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. Rex and his pals are on a quest to reach the promised land, Elysium, and the main lands are made up of giant titans, which are godlike beings. So godlike, people live on them, I guess. Think Shadow of Colossus, but more biggerer. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is one of the most gorgeous games on the Switch with impressively deep combat and mechanics and a story for fans and newcomers alike. Whoo, now that is an RPG list I can get behind. Now what's your favorite RPG on the Switch? Let us know deep down in the comments. And if you need more, grab your favorite melee weapon and attack that subscribe button. Or you can always check out NintendoLife.com. I'm Dave. Thanks for having me in your entourage. Oh, wow.